Greetings, salutations, and let's hope we get it right this time. This time I'm talking about Dragon Age 2 Legacy. The fourth DA2 downloadable, downloadable content and its first standalone campaign. However, in a trend, it steps, uh, steps away from the usual trend of Origins standalone campaigns by actually not including any new characters as your, as your party. Yeah, using all three defined characters from the main game itself. Good thing, bad thing, you decide. Now, talking about the characters, there was a little problem with mine. On my first one, I encountered a little bug. Now, the DLC is supposed to include your sibling as well. Thing is, I hadn't picked the chosen to keep Bethany with the party on the third act when she returned. So when it came to playing Legacy, while we could hear her speaking, she was nowhere to be seen. I was actually rather confused at the time, looking around at the screen thinking, that's not Isabella. And it finally dawns on me, that's Bethany, but she's not there. She's missing. She is in there in voice only. So yeah, if you want a little bug, bug to experience for yourself, just play at the end game where you did not choose to have your sibling with you at the final battle. Okay, now get on to beef of things. The first major beef, the advertising. It is in my opinion it could have been done better as he just gave away way too much information. All I would have been happy with for selling this is the cat has attacked you, tried to get to your sibling, and you don't know why. <clears throat> but no, they go further than this. They tell you the cat has gone after you and that there's this ancient deep ancient dark spawn locked away in a in the warden prison and now you're out have to deal with it basically that it also said that there are new foes to face bonk em. there are no new foes except for the final boss what we get is the return of deep spot deep stalkers brontos and the genox who are gonna form a big part of my dante The only thing new to this, new to this, is pretty much <coughs> is the location, the story, and a few new characters. That's all. Anything else can already be found in either the main game or in Origins itself. Nothing new, really, in terms of mobs. Okay, moving on. According to a review on the Escapist magazine, the legacy is both too short and too easy. And to that I say, maybe to them, not to everyone else. It is DLC, a standalone campaign. It doesn't need to be particularly long, it just needs to do what it do, does and it needs to do it well. When I played it for the first time, it took me around two and a half hours complete that for me is long enough not too short not too long not like the horrible abomination that is the, of the uh, origins DLC the golems good god that was horrible no, I'm not imagining about that not this time anyway this is a DLC campaign not an expansion like awakenings as for being too easy, I can't really say. I can only really play the game on, easy, on casual, normal, and then it starts kicking my ass, and I want to get to the end of this thing. The game, the content itself is rather linear, with uh, very few. In fact, it was only two side quests really, which was releasing demons, learning more about the your past. As such, and locating a a missing dwarven son. Anything else? 
we'll probably just get in the way, delay things. Mind you, there is another one if you include Anders. I won't spell that one, you have to play it for yourself to experience it. Now, going back to the Genlox. What the hell is Bioware playing at? They are mucking about with their own law here with what they've done to the Genlox. The Ogres, the Herlocks, yeah. They're not exactly what they look like in origins, but hell, you can still tell what they were. You can't really muck that up too much. They didn't look as friendly as before, but hell, they were the Dark Swan. We somewhat identified. We get to the Genlocks. Genlocks are basically the based dwarven freakish Dark Swan creatures. With those that were green to theirs, which can either be silly or friendly. All depends on your view. But well, what we get in Legacy are gorilla type creatures that range from average Genlock height to the Alphas, which is half half the size of an ogre wielding a, a spiked shield. They run you down with steamroller fashion, making them one of the most irritating things to fight. But you cannot attack them head on. It's either be steamrolled or your damage, damage will do nothing. Why were the Genlocks changed? I don't see any reason. There was nothing in the law to suggest it. And the law itself denotes that Genlocks are the most commonly found Dark Swan. Which was changed to the most commonly found Dark Swan underground. Why? I don't know. Now, moving along to something better. The combat or way it's been treated has been improved. The majority of uh, incoming wave based combat has been dealt out. Where it's just mostly ambush setups we're facing in the first quarter. And we're facing the, the uh, Carter. And then in the most of most of the boss fights, in, in those randomly appearing incoming waves are there. Fine, there's a couple of bosses that disappear and spawn some ads you have to take out before you can attack the main boss again. Hell, yeah, at least it's not done as bad as the highborn dragon in the A2. Ugh, that fight. <coughs> Overall, it's been improved, removing the annoying bits from before. Now we come to the last boss. Having only played on casual, I have not faced how tricky this thing could be. It is a very visually impressive fight, with each stage taking another step up. It isn't particularly tricky if you're being sensible about it. But in the terms of DLC related to fighting animal bosses, yeah, he's one of the best. Now we come down to the ending cutscenes of the of the fight of the DLC of Legacy is you've beaten it, you've returned home. And depending on, that, on which act is which scene you get. In Act 1, you return to Gamlin's hovel, explain things to Mother, and she does not react well to it. Not at all. She's still in a bad say, bad, bad mental status, and she's still blaming herself for the loss of Carver. Or definitely, depending which class she chose. You do in Act 2. She takes things much better, more calmly, more settled, settled down as such. Act 3, or after the main game itself, yeah, you played it, you know she's not there, there anymore, so anything you get is pretty much what you suspect of. She would say in Act 2. 
Now, what ultimately Legacy brings is more speculation. Namely about the Golden City, what the Chantry said brought about the first blight. And even to Flemeth herself, and even down to the ritual. <clears throat> oh, not the ritual. It, actually, yes, the ritual that Morgan used at the end of Origins, and even to the little spell Morgan suspected Flemeth would use on her. I am not going to share my theories on this because I don't so want to. This is the third time recording this, and I don't want to do it again. Ultimately, what do I say? I say this turned out rather well. I actually like it better than the main game itself. I am, I feeling somewhat burned out on the main game, but I managed to play through the legacy at least three times now. It actually took me a while to play for the third one, third one because I wanted the experience of playing it through on the second act. What better comparison? I've done it. I'm not going to return to the main game for a while. Still, I like Legacy better than the main game. I feel it's been done much better. At least terms in fluff. No annoying side quests. Combat's much better. That's just my opinion. If you like it, you probably got it. If you don't, you probably got it anyway. And or just not gonna bother with it anyway. So anyway, anyways. Well, that is me. Peace out, people. <laughs>